First question came from Be the Change You Wish to See. I, I, I love that name, by the way. Anyway, he said uh, Dennis K was on WNST and made the take of the year. The franchise tag is simply two first round picks and the highest offer. Kirk Cousins, an injured Dak Prescott, wasn't going to test the strength of the tag. There hasn't been a former MVP tag before in my memory that tested the market. If Lamar tests the market next year, he will get what he wants and more. Um, and he said there's also the exclusive and non-exclusive franchise tags as well. He said Mama Jackson is the agent of the century. The Ravens are on the clock. And he said, P.S. Love the example you set for black YouTubers. You're a trailblazer and deserve your flowers. Oh, man, I, I, I appreciate that, man. Oh, that kind of caught me off guard. I, I, thank you. Thank you. For real, man. Um, as far as the Ravens, though, they, they can't let it get to the franchise tag. They don't please. I, I I just really hope that they do not let this thing get to the franchise tag, because in my opinion, and hey, I, I don't have any better football knowledge than anybody out there. Probably my football knowledge is probably worse than a lot of people's out there. But in my opinion, um, if you let it get to the franchise tag for Lamar, like if it's a running back, okay. The linebacker, okay. Defensive lineman, cornerback, safety, all these other positions, that's one. But if you, especially for Lamar, if you let it get to the franchise tag, to me, in my opinion, what that shows is that you don't know what you have. It shows that you don't believe in him fully. You don't fully believe in your quarterback. That's what that would show me. Because if you fully believe in him, if you really know what you have, if you really know who you have, that franchise tag is not an option. Lamar has given the Baltimore Ravens the deadline. Hey, hey, before the season starts, we want the deal. We want the deal done. After the season starts, I ain't talking no more. And that's as clear as a negotiation as it can be. And that's really ultimate. Like, hey, either we either get this thing done or we don't. Either we take care of this now or we won't. You don't want it to get there. And, and you've had time. And again, we, we know it takes two. It takes two to tango. So there's Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, and they both got to come together. And they literally both got to come together since Lamar, he ain't got no agent representing him. So he goes into these contract negotiations himself with him and his people directly. So if the, the, the Ravens, they got to come with it, man. They got to come with it because you do not, you do not want this thing to get ugly. You don't. And Lamar Jackson has continued to, to do all the right things, to say all the right things. He, he hasn't been holding out. He ain't even been holding in. And he could. We, we've seen players do it. We've seen quarterbacks do it. He ain't been holding in or out. He's just been showing up, going to work participating, continuing to be actively involved with everything the Baltimore Ravens do. So they better not let it get ugly. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from y'all. Next question came from my guy Pablo702. He said, what up, OG? What's the word on Ronnie Stanley? By the way, how did it feel to be there and watch Jamal Lewis break 2,000 yards? Oh, man. Um, I, I didn't even realize you remember that story. But as far as uh, Ronnie Stanley, nothing yet. Uh, they said he'd been looking good walking around, but he obviously hasn't been practicing yet. So we just got to wait and see. Um, and for Jamal Lewis, it was crazy, man. It, it, it was it was crazy uh, seeing that, being a part of that, being there live for that. Um, because it's like, man, like 2,000, that's a lot of running yards. That's why I, I just really commended uh, Derrick Henry like a couple years ago when he got it, especially in today's NFL. Because now, like back then, it wasn't such a passing league. I mean, it was, but not nearly as it is now. Um, and for, for Derrick Henry to do that in today's day and age in the NFL, and that was before they went to 17 games. That was still in 16 games. For him to do that, that, that was amazing. So, what, yeah, with Jamal Lewis, is, um, 
it's a part of history and it, and it was really cool being there next question came from my guy phil and appreciate you being a patron uh he said like i mentioned i watched the pat mcafee and rich eisen show now and then uh where for four seasons we have seen and heard so much criticism by analysts reporters fans and even former players about the way lamar jackson is a mobile quarterback who uses both his legs and arms my question to you and the fans who watch your show uh do you think we will start hearing the same about trey lance with this being his first year as a starter and with the way he plays exactly the same as lamar jackson or will everyone i listed be cheering for trey since san francisco is a larger city uh with that franchise being in the town of hollywood shout out to hollywood by the way he said your thoughts and take care appreciate it phil um man that 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 is a really good question and i i just hope for uh for for trey's sake uh for justin field's sake too i i just hope that they don't get that um obviously i hope lamar wouldn't get it but he got it and he's been getting it forever and it's gonna stick with him um people are gonna just continue to run with that because the way i feel is if if these narratives if they start early then they're gonna finish late straight up if, if they start early the like one uh analyst says it then the, another one will say it then another one will say it and fans will start believing it and da, 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 da. you just so I, I i just hope the best for Trey Lance and, and Justin Fields and just getting ready to watch them take take that next step in their careers. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll, 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 we'll see because a lot goes based off of philosophy too because Ravens are a, a very run, 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 run heavy team. San Francisco, they run heavy team too now, but they, they have a, a, I think they have a better balance between the run and the passing game. They, they do a better job of having each, each of those complement each other. Um, so we'll see what Trey Lance does with those 49ers because they're a team that's built to win right now. It ain't like Trey Lance is coming into this team that, oh, yeah, we probably got to wait a couple years. No, the 49ers built to win right now. Um, and as far as uh, Justin Fields, I know you weren't talking about him, but just from having watched the, uh, the, the, the game, uh, the preseason game between the Bears and the, some of it, I watched the beginning, I watched the first drive. Um, and seeing Justin Fields is like, man, I just, with that offensive line, oh, yikes, it, it, it was ugly. And I know it was preseason, but it was, it was, it was ugly. It was scary. Um, and I just what I what I also hope that doesn't happen because this happens with a lot of quarterbacks that are very mobile that can move. Teams will be like they won't invest as much into the offensive line, especially early on. They won't invest as much into the offensive line. They'll be like, oh no, we'll be straight. The quarterback he can make people miss. So I just, I just hope that the, the Bears don't take that route and that the 49ers don't take that route. Uh, and they really try to uh, build around these, these young quarterbacks. And I, but most importantly, I just really hope these narratives, they don't creep their ugly way in. Next questions came from my boy Marcus. And, and I appreciate you sending that on Cash App. Thank you, man. He said, Engraving, we see you moving around, chopping it up with other Ravens content creators. We appreciate the hard work, my guy. No, nah, man, I, I appreciate them. I, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate everybody that, that does this because... Um, everybody like they they put their own spin on it because again we, we all get the same news we all get the same information um, but everybody presents it in a different way everybody looks at it from a different angle and, and that's what I appreciate about it so much um, and that's what makes it so much fun uh, so shout out to, to, to every other single uh, Ravens content creator whether they do it on YouTube Twitter TikTok or whatever it may be um, shout out to everybody, man. Uh, he said, can we dissect this wide receiver situation? I was on the same page with you when it got to our second round pick and George Pickens was still available. I don't know if I'm more triggered by the fact that we passed up on him knowing we needed a replacement for Hollywood or by the fact that he was drafted by a division rival. Let alone that black and yellow team who wants to be black and gold so bad. Uh, for my questions, do you believe that we, the fans, would still be concerned about the wide receiver position had the Ravens actually selected Pickens? Um... No, I think there would be a lot less concern, especially if he was making plays. I think there would be a lot less concern because from what I see, um, I see a lot of fans are super confident in Rashad Bateman, as I feel like they should be because in limited time last year, especially limited time with Lamar Jackson, look, Rashad Bateman looked good. He looked the part. Um, so, and then in, in training camp, he's continued to do his thing. He has had some drops now. So, but he's made a lot of plays too. Um, and as long as the, every receiver is going to have drops. Well, not Pro Shane Duvernay, but as long as the big plays outweigh the bad ones and outweigh the drops and stuff, it, it, it'll be okay. Um, but I think there would, there would be less concern. Um, but 
Cause with 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 Pickens, he don't he only dropped because of injury. He ain't dropped because he was sorry. He ain't dropped because he's a bad player. He dropped because of injury. So I think there will be a lot less concern. I think there will still be some concern though, but it will be a lot less. Uh, he said, can't help but wonder what could have been while at the same time saying to myself, can't miss what you never had. <laughs> I like that. Yet in the back of my mind thinking, my goodness, this dude is about to be a handful for the foreseeable future. Hey, yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see. He's off to a good start. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, do you believe the Ravens fans know what they want in a wide receiver? Mm, I like that question. He said, from what I've seen, they are all over the place with what they want. It all just depends on who you ask. It all depends on who you ask. Me, I was saying I want somebody who's established, somebody who's nice, like already proven, but not an old washed up guy, but a young guy who's already proven, who's like that, and he's an outside wide receiver. Not another slot receiver because I feel like we got enough of those, but an outside guy. But anyway, like somebody like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, six, maybe like a Keenan Allen type of wide receiver. I really wanted DK Metcalf too. Um, I didn't know, I never thought it was going to happen, but I was hoping I was like, Hey, Ravens, don't be afraid to shock me a little bit. But anyway, um, let's keep going. He said, some fans wanted Debo, some wanted DK. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, then there was the consideration of Julio Fuller and OBJ. Yeah. We, we done had all those conversations before too. Uh, myself, I was hoping the Ravens would make a play for Devonte Parker two years ago and go after Michael Thomas this year, bigger receivers who can win the one-on-ones. Hey, yeah. Michael Thomas. That would, uh, he would definitely compliment what the Ravens uh, do. Good route runner, um, especially with them, <laughs> them slams. They always call them slam boy. But anyway, uh, he said, that's not to say DK nor Julio aren't those type of receivers, but I felt we wouldn't utilize Debo the way 49ers do, and I thought it would cost too much to acquire Metcalf. Oh, hey, you get what you pay for. But we'll see how it all works out. He said, now, I'm not the biggest fan of wide receivers out of Notre Dame. None of them play up to their potential from college, and they all tend to have issue with drops, in my opinion. As for Julio and OBJ, well, I heard Skip mention earlier in this offseason that Brady reached out to Julio, and it always seems like OBJ wanted to go back to L.A. So I never thought the Ravens had a real shot at either anyway. Uh, in regards to Michael Thomas, I just felt that his contract was affordable, especially considering what the Ravens would have had to pay had they actually been able to acquire Debo or DK. That's true. They would have had to pay. I wouldn't have minded them paying, but they would have certainly had to pay. Um, second, I felt that because he hasn't played in two years, the Saints asking price couldn't be too high. Third, the guy is still so young. Fourth, this dude can't be guarded and doesn't drop anything. Fifth, his mentality and demeanor screams Raven to me. He seems quiet, but you can tell he has that Marcus Peterson. Oh, no. Quiet? Uh... Um, Mike Thomas? No. <laughs> he ain't quiet. That boy be running his mouth, man. Uh, but yeah, so he said, uh, you know exactly what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel you on that Marcus Peters part. I never thought about that with Michael Thomas, but yeah. Because he, he'll, he'll run his mouth, man. Um, he said, of course, it all depends on his health. But was that not the case with all the other wide receivers mentioned earlier? Well, not DK Metcalf. Um, but with all the other guys, Julio, yeah, OBJ, yeah, Will Fuller, yeah, Debo Samuel, yeah. So... Yeah, I feel what you're saying on that. Next, he said, do you believe Keith Williams serves any other role on the team regarding the wide receivers other than development? And this brings me to my overall point. I'm starting to believe that the Ravens don't look to Keith Williams' help with scouting wide receivers, but only to develop them, which is a head scratcher in itself. So while we can still blame Easy e Eric DeCosta, for his selection of wide receivers or lack thereof, but I'm ready to start looking more at the scouting department because, correct me if I'm wrong, but wouldn't he have relied on whoever is scouting the wide receivers to say, hey, Eric, I know we just lost Hollywood, so Pickens might be a pretty good replacement opposite Rashad. It, well, you got to think, though. You got to think philosophy now. Think about where the Ravens' value is on the team. And, I mean, we ain't even got to think about the team, but just on offense. Think about it and look how they drafted and look how they moved. They built up the offensive line, which is great. great, great. They kept Jawan James. They, they, they re-signed Patrick McCary. And that was during the season. But they signed Morgan Moses. Uh, they drafted Tyler Linderbaum. Um, they drafted Daniel Falele. Uh, So they, they did some stuff with the offensive line. So it's was like, okay, cool. Um, even though they got all right tackles. I don't think they got a left tackle. But anyway, that's beside the point. But um, And then they doubled down at tight end. They drafted two tight ends, like, pretty much back-to-back -back with Charlie Kala and uh, Kola and uh, Isaiah Likely. Uh, they drafted another running back. Um, and then defensive guys. And then they, 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 they traded Hollywood away. Sammy Watkins didn't resign. We didn't want him to resign, but he didn't resign. So they, they cut Miles Boykin. So three receivers gone, um, and with two out of the three, we pretty much saw it coming. Hollywood was a shock on draft night, uh, but it's something that he wanted to happen for a while now. But they didn't replace any of them. 
They got undrafted guys, and we and we hope they go off. But you so you see where the value is. They, they weren't like, all right, at tight end, let's go get an undrafted free agent. No, no. They weren't like, offensive line. Let's go get an undrafted free agent. No, no, no. They want defense, the, and they have signed undrafted free agents, but. The guys who they expect to make an impact. Like, we have le legitimate undrafted free agent wide receivers that can make the team and that are looking like they're going to make the team. But what about tight ends? No. We ain't got no undrafted guys that's looking like they're going to make it. What about offensive linemen? Mm. Well, Patrick McCarry, but, I mean, undrafted this year. No, man, this so you, you can see by how the Ravens move where their true investments are. So, I mean, that, that, that's, that's where it is for me. That, and that's what I, I think that would answer your question right there uh, And he said uh, Please accept my apologies for the long email But I've been sitting on this one all summer Try to be objective But I haven't been this confident about uh, A Baltimore squad in a while But just like Lamar is in the negotiations Every time the Ravens come back with an offer That reads less than 250 M's guaranteed I'm out I, I, I love that ended man uh, He had a, another one He said for fun's sake Alright Engraven I just sent along So I'll be brief with this one If you were part of the Ravens media Oh uh, what would be one question you ask Harbaugh and one question you ask uh, Easy E Eric DaCosta? Um, hmm. I would probably ask them, uh, both of them, maybe the same question. Do you feel like you've done everything uh, on your end to really bring out the best in Lamar Jackson? I would ask that same question to both of them. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, he said, if you were the offensive coordinator of the Ravens, what would be the first four plays you call on offense? Well, that's tricky because it would, it would just it would determine the success of the previous play. Um, so, like, to start off, because uh, y'all know I'm greedy. I'm greedy. Um, so, I would, I would probably call play action and have somebody just run deep. Um, maybe Bateman. Well, you know what? No, I'll probably have Bateman run like a curl route and have, like, maybe, who else got speed on the team? Duvernay? Uh, or Shamar Bridges, whoever would be out there. I, I would have a, I would have a speed guy just run deep. I have Bateman fake like he was running deep, but I, I would have a speed. Well, Bateman got speed too, but I would have somebody else run deep because I, I, I know a lot of attention is going to be on Bateman, but I, I want that other guy to try to shock the world. Uh, and then it would just depend on the success of the players after that. And he said, "Who is one person you're hoping to see on Studio 44? And what question would you want asked?" Um, I feel like Lamar Jackson is such an easy answer. Um. Mm, maybe, maybe Proche. Maybe Proche. Uh, depending on how things shake out, maybe Shamar Bridges or Makai Polk. Probably Proche though. And I would um I would want to ask like I would want the question to be asked: What do you bring to this wide receiver group that sets you apart from the other guys? And that's not, it's not as a diss. I would genuinely want to hear what he had to say and what he feel his biggest asset to the team would be from his point of view. Um, he said, which logo do you favor more, the Raven or the Shield? Uh, the the Raven. Yeah, the, the Raven. I know a lot of people like the old Shield. I, I say the Raven, though. If you were the GM of the Ravens, <laughs> come on, man. Get out of here. He said, if you were GM of the Ravens, what round would you draft Spencer James? Oh, he'd he be undrafted, man. Oh, he, he got, uh, yeah, he'd he be undrafted, man. Uh, that dude, um, man, he, a lot of drama going on. A lot of drama. And he, and he had a lot of drama going on for years. Uh, but anyway, he said, uh, toward the end of your outro, what is he saying? Shout out to Engraven, Noah Darius. Yeah, Noah Darius. That's his name. Uh, he said at least that's what the closed caption said Oh yeah, you know, them captions, they be messing up everything But it's all good Next question came from my guy Emmanuel He said, hey Engraven, hope you are well I was watching the newly released Ravens Wire And I saw something that caught my eyes If you skip to the 2455 mark You'll see Travis Jones beat out Pat McCarry On a move that got everyone hype Including Calais Campbell I missed it the first time I watched the episode But it reinforces what we all hope Travis Jones can turn into uh, How much playing time do you expect him to receive this season? Once again, I hope you are well You mean a lot to Ravens community Oh no, Ravens community means a lot to me uh, it's the other way around. Um, but, yeah, Travis Jones can be really good. I mean, he, he, he got off to a really good start in that first preseason game, uh, which was great, and we just hope that continues. I think he could get a lot of playing time because, uh, one, he's a defensive player. Uh, two, he was a high draft pick. Um, but, three, they, they really sound like they really love him. Like, like really love Like, there's some players that, oh, Ravens will draft him or whatever, and they, it'll sound like they, oh, they, they, they like him, but there's some players, like, when you hear the Ravens talk about them, like, you tell they really love loved them. One of those players is Kyle Hamilton. Another one of those players is Travis Jones. Another one of those players is Isaiah Likely. 
Last year, it was Brandon Stevens. You could tell that they love, they love Brandon Stevens. But this year, with as far as the new guys, it's, it's those three. So, yeah, he's going to be out there a lot. <laughs> Next question came from my boy, Rich Boy James. He said, what's up, man? I know it might be a bit of a reach. I wish for thinking, but when Mike Vick was in his prime, he had the braids in, lethal and dangerous. Lamar is mostly compared to him. I'm looking at Lamar. He's got them in, too. I know it's silly, but I'm expecting a dangerous season for Lamar based off of having braids alone. <laughs> In all seriousness, it's up in the air if Lamar will start the season without a new contract based off of recent interviews. What are your expectations for Lamar this year, and would he hold out? We would think not. Tough season for us last year. AFC Championship appearances would be a win for me. I, I, I agree. Um, but our ultimate win would obviously be the Super Bowl. But um, with the Braves, hey, we're going to see, man. We're going to see. But I, I think more so with health. With health, is going to be a dangerous season for Lamar uh, and the Ravens. It, like, it, as long as they're healthy. They, they they can rock with the best of them. And just depending on how things go, in my opinion, in the passing game, that could help push them over the top or keep them back. I think that that is the biggest factor besides health. That's the biggest factor for me. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I, I don't anticipate Lamar Jackson holding out. I, I don't I don't think he'll hold out. He even said he said it last year. I think he's mentioned it this year. No, he didn't. Well, he definitely mentioned it last year. This year he's been kind of like uh, kind of been like mysterious with it a little bit. Um, but I, I, I don't anticipate him holding out at all. Oh, next question came from my guy Nathan. He said, Trevor Lawrence. Hey, Graven, hope your family has enjoyed the summer. I know it's only preseason, but is Trevor Lawrence a guy? He scored three times against the Browns and showed flashes of greatness throughout last season. They just spent all of that money in the offseason on getting weapons for their QB. Also, the fourth and two play was so Lamar-esque, it made me want to watch more. Thanks for your time. Oh, man, you know, I, I have not watched any... Uh, the only other part of a preseason game I watched was the first drive uh, of the Bears versus the Seahawks. But other than that, I have not watched any other preseason games, obviously, besides the Ravens. So, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, he's the number one overall pick. So I would hope that he is one of them guys. Next question came from Kyron. He said, what's up, Engraven? I was in a barbershop today. My barber and I were talking about Isaiah Likely. I hope while y'all were talking, it ain't get too intense. Because, you know, when, when them barbers, once they start talking, boy, they, they well, at least barbers that I've had uh, in the past, they don't ever stop. They be going, man. And that can make you, you could end up at the barbershop for hours. Anyway, uh, he said uh, that Isaiah likely reminds him of Anquan Bowden, and he could see the Ravens converting him into a wide receiver, especially because he's not going to be tight end one over Mark Andrews. How likely, no pun intended, do you think it would be if the Ravens made him a wide receiver? I think likely is just going to be one of those players that they just have all over. I don't think he necessarily has to convert to a wide receiver. Uh, so to speak, but I think he's going to be somebody that they they just really use everywhere, um, and they I think they keep him at the same size that he's at, because uh, that boy he can, he can move man, he can move and he got the little wiggles too. I said, oh hold up now, hold up now, um, but he he's just going to be somebody that because again like we talked about earlier, the Ravens love Isaiah, they love Isaiah likely as they should. He's giving them so many reasons to love him. Um, but I don't think he'll necessarily convert to wide receiver. I mean, he used to be a wide receiver, but I don't think he'll convert back to wide receiver. I think that he'll be at tight end, but he'll just have a lot of different roles on offense. Receivers got me nervous now too, dog. Next question came from my boy, Chris L. He said, hey, Graven is Chris, better known as CL Ravens Rule. It's Ravens, it's Friday night right now. And after watching coverage from many sources and talking to my best friend from Annapolis, I laid out some points he shared with me since he was at the game and I shared them in a comment on game recap vid. Do you think we are walking a thin line now that suddenly... Uh, that receiver room is getting thin uh, of experience, and we picked up no one like you've been preaching uh, correctly, I believe, all off season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they are definitely. I mean, they 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 playing with fire, and hey, if it works out, that's cool. But you got a risk of being burned. Um, yeah. Oh, let me keep going because he said Proche out two weeks. What Harb described in his famous soft tissue one in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. You know them soft tissue, and that that's how I go to man. Oh yeah, it's a soft tissue injury. That that's a we'll see what it is, but anyway, um, they, yeah, he said the soft one, the soft tissue one or two weeks explanation we've heard several times already. This camp with players missing time, I think he said that for oh it was somebody else too. Is it Falele? I think it's Falele. He said the same thing for. Anyway, uh, and Wallace sprained knee, not good. Bridges put himself right back in roster conversation uh, on last night. My other question is two parts. First, do you think? Uh, the really hard fought competition in that room is leading to some of these issues now and could for the rest of camp. I mean, no, I, there's, I mean, it's, it's competition is a good thing for them because you want to have whoever the best of the best is 
on your team at wide receiver. You want the best guys out there. So the competition, yeah, it's I mean it's it's tough, and I mean it, injuries are just part of the game. Unfortunate part of the game, but they part of the game. So I don't think the competition has led to like more injuries and whatnot. I mean, guys out there, they 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 put giving it their all. They're trying not only to make the Ravens, but just to to make their careers, man. Um, and especially at, with the Ravens, because as a wide receiver, for making it on the Ravens is or making it in the NFL as a Ravens receiver is tough. Everything is stacked against you already, and most don't make it out of life. Seriously, I ain't even joking or nothing like that. I ain't trolling or nothing like that. But y'all know most don't make it out of the Ravens after Ravens. That's that, that could be pretty much it. Um, so these dudes, they they fighting for their NFL lives, man. He said, and also, what's your read on Duvernay? He obviously is a world-class returner and makes a few plays, but this camp, he seems to be acting like the game's too big for him in certain situations. Is he that big 50-50 guy they wanted in Boykin? No, no, Devin Duvernay is not a 50-50 guy at all. Um, Devin Duvernay, uh, I don't know about him, man. I just, I don't know. I don't know what the Ravens are going to do with him. If, are they going to actually use him as a wide receiver this year or just still have him as a gadget guy? That's, just, that's, that's, my, that's my biggest thing with Devin Duvernay. I just, I, I don't know how they view him. He said, I don't know, but even though it was the first game, Bridges from HBCU seemed unfazed by the moment and showed that he can be that guy. Thanks for your effort, as always, and you and the family take care. Just realize you're from Maryland also. That's why we think alike. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm attaching a pic from the rear end zone of Shamar's touchdown that shows his vertical and athleticism and could definitely be a problem for opponents' DBs. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, as always, be cool, my man, and keep on rocking. Hey, appreciate you, man. Next question came from my boy Kevin B. He said, hey, Engraven, hope all is well. Thanks for all your content. Now, did you hear Stephen Means presser after Tuesday's practice? If not, check it out. But I'll be back to seeing my thoughts on what I heard. Peace and blessings, my friend. I did not hear it, but with them trotting him on out there for a presser, especially, like, timing is everything. It's, it's been cut down days and all that. More cut downs are coming. So, yeah, it's looking like he's going to make it. It's looking like he's going to make it. Cause they, they don't just try to anybody out there to talk to the media. They don't they don't do that. So I think Steven Means gonna have a spot on this roster, if you know what I mean. Next question came from my guy Emmanuel. He said, I think the Ravens will be 13 and 4, Bengals will be eleven and six, Browns will be nine and eight, and Steelers will be eight and nine. What do you think Ravens record of the season uh will be? Um I I say like twelve and five. Uh ho hopefully like thir thirteen and four would be nice. That'd be nice. I wouldn't be mad at that. But I say like 12 and 5. Yeah, I say 12 and 5. 13 and 4 would be a high for me. 12 and 5 would not necessarily be low. It'd be a good low to have, but I say 12 and 5. Next question came from my guy Rockstar. He said, My thoughts after preseason game one. Despite Malik Harrison making a few plays, he looked out of shape and lost in space. Uh, between the tackles, he looked like uh, he looks like a thumper. Uh yeah, there was that that one play in space where he was just um just a little slow. I mean, and he was chasing. Who was he chasing? Was it a quarterback or wide receiver? I forgot who he was chasing. Oh, maybe it was a tight end. I forget. But I uh, was somebody with some significantly more speed in it. But he, he had a nice little angle, and he and he ended up just missing the tackle uh, when he ended up catching up. Um, but he made three nice plays from the jump. But uh, anyway, safety is clearly a strong group. Boom. Pepe looks as advertised, giving up a few catches, none too serious. Played physical and made plays. Yeah, and then they had him at punt return too. So we'll see what they do uh, against the Cardinals. Uh, Big Travis Jones is the truth with his bull rush. There's literally no one blocking him. One v one. I know it's preseason game number one, but let me tell you, the linebacker group is looking really bad. Depth is also looking very bad. McLean, Fago, Welch aren't making a team. Oh, you think they're gonna get rid of Christian Welch this time? We'll see. We'll see. But, yeah, linebacker is a big question. Uh, last but not least, Bridges, number 85, can be that London Drake that EDC was clamoring over. Polk brings a different swagger to the unit. Yeah, he does. Wallace, unfortunately, doesn't make the team this year, not because of injury, but because he's getting outplayed, and I don't understand why g uh had him running a Duvernay special. Now, I, I don't think it would be something where they will cut Tylen Wallace. The worst-case scenario for Tylen Wallace, I think, is that they just stash him this year. That's the worst case scenario I think happens with him. But I don't I don't think there's a I don't think he has a chance of being cut where he doesn't make the team. But we'll see soon. And he said, Thank you. Uh be clean. Y'all take care. Sorry about the long rain. I just love my Ravens. Super Bowl or nothing, baby. That, that wasn't long at all. Next question came from Romeo. He said, Lamar's contract requests. The disrespect by the media is too real. Can't believe some would pay Lamar less than Watson, who will miss two years due to his charges. Um, man, this, uh, I, it's, I was kind of weirded out when they talked about, um, his, uh, so, some, I forgot who it was. Somebody said that, that 
Deshaun Watson had more leverage than Lamar Jackson. I was like, what? It just, <coughs> excuse me, it didn't make any sense to me. Uh, but anyway, uh, another question he had was um, the or comment that he made. The Ravens are listed as among the best fits, the best team fits for Giants wide receiver Darius Slayton. And Darius Slayton, I know he's fallen down the, the depth chart uh, with the Giants. Um, and he, uh, so he's, and I think he has, he either has one year left on his deal or he has one year left after this year. So he would have two years. But anyway, he's at the end of his deal. Um, and he, he got some good speed. Um, so he could help with that. Uh, I don't know, would he would he really move the needle though? For for me, I just let's say no. Um, it couldn't hurt to add him, but I just I, I just don't feel like he would just really push the Ravens over the top like that. It'd, it'd be nice if he like surprised him. Like, oh, okay, let's go, Darius Slayton. But I just because uh, they, they've been talked about him before amongst Ravens fans and whatnot. But I just kind of been like, oh, okay, whatever. Shamar and Bateman combo. Last question on this episode came from Thomas Gamerson. He said, ain't great when Shamar Bridges is looking good. But I have to say, he's going to have a good shot to be wide receiver three. Ooh, so that's pushing him up on that depth chart. With Proche and Wallace out for now, from undrafted to wide receiver three. How do you like his chances to be that third guy out for the Ravens? Thank you and hope the family stay blessed. Hey, appreciate it. Um, yeah, the injuries can change the game, as we know with a lot of experience injuries can change everything they can change the depth chart they can change depth they could they change everything um they have provided opportunities for players they've taken away opportunities for players so everything depends on health yeah pro shade is supposed to be out for a couple weeks tyler wallace still to be determined we don't know yet um so yeah that would allow shamar bridges to just keep working his way up so now now it's all about what he does with this possible opportunity that he could have yeah Right and greater.